Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor. Welcome to another Monday Mastery where I give you my intuitive take on the energy we are currently in, recap what we have just been in and give you some advice on how to move forward. This is a timeless message, although I will spend the first couple of minutes just going through the recent solar energy because it is extremely impactful, not only to our energy bodies, um, but to our nervous systems and everything in between. So last week was not too bad, but still very active. Uh, it's it's all relative considering in a solar minimum, we would have little to no solar flares. Being in a solar maximum, having many solar flares is common, um, but relative to recent weeks, it wasn't quite as intense, although there was plenty of activity. So I do have some notes up here that I reference if you see me looking over there, but Monday we had one X-class solar flare and eight C-class. The C-class flares are um, increasing in volume. We're getting a lot of C-class and a lot of M-class flares. And so for anyone who's new here, um, C is sort of the softest, easiest flare. Um, M is the middle and X is the highest. X can go very, very high. Um, and there's usually a measure. So you can have a C-class um, 1.5 or a 3.5 or an M 3.5. Um, X, we've had, I think the Carrington event, which is the biggest X-class solar flare we've ever had was if an X 45. So that just gives you a frame of reference. Um, Tuesday, we had 27 C-class solar flares. So C-class being the lowest, but still 27 flares is a lot for us to deal with. Wednesday, we had one X-class, 6M and 3C. Thursday, we had a, a geostorm. So we reached the KP5. Um, on the KP index, uh, which is also known as a G1 storm. Um, we only had one M-class flare and two C-class flares that day. So still increased intensity, even though less flares. Friday, we had one M-class, one X-class, and 15 C-class. Um, we did have some Schumann resonance activity on Wednesday. I forgot to mention that, um, but otherwise mostly quiet on the Schumann resonance front there. Um, Saturday, we had two X-class, one M-class, and 12 C-class. So Saturday was was pretty buzzy. Um, Sunday, we had two M-class and 15 C-class. So lots of, lots of activation this past week. I would say um, there were moments where I would notice... Uh, certainly a, a lot of an influx of a lot of energy, right? Just sort of that, that shaky nervous system feel the desire to put my feet on the ground, or maybe my kids were um, irritated or, you know, they would all of a sudden feel frustrated over something that typically wasn't um, as frustrating. And it's interesting being a trauma healer. Um, usually if someone has an exaggerated response, we would say that was a trigger to the trauma. Um, but sometimes in this state of being in a solar maximum, you can have a trigger that is it being provoked, or I'm sorry, a response that is being provoked by a solar flare and not necessarily a trauma trigger. So it's fun to, to monitor this and really get to know the, the NOAA website um, where you can go and look at, is it NOAA? I think that's weather, sorry. Uh, I think it's the NASA website. Just do a Google search for KP index and you'll be able to see um, when, when geostorms are coming in. Otherwise, check out Pat Donsworth on Facebook. That's um, who does the beautiful consolidation of all of the flares for me. Um, otherwise, you might have your own source for that. Um, point being, there is there's a lot of sort of unseen energy this past week, whether it was associated with a, a flare or not. There were um, many, many shifts in perspectives, a lot of crown activation, um, headaches, a couple of days, uh, a lot of new insights, just, I mean, perspective shifting so quickly. Um, it was, it was like lightning, just new insights, new thoughts, new perspectives, new ideas. Um, so it definitely felt like there was quite a bit of, um, coming in the information coming in with those flares, um, and it's, it's also interesting how, uh, it felt like the, the old was, was coming up for, to be addressed again. Right. What I mean by that is old habits, old thought patterns, um, maybe, um, habits that you've had in the past that you thought you had overcome coming back, maybe in, in a stronger force being more difficult to resist. Um, it, it was as if I had this feeling of like, um, the old sort of clinging on to its last breath of life. 
and there, there I've noticed historically too, before something's fully re released, there's, there's a surge of it. It's, it's more intense. It's, it seem seemingly stronger temporarily. And then it's really let go. It's as if we kind of have to dip our toe back into the old thing and taste it just one last time to, to really remind ourselves, I definitely am not going back there. There's no way on God's green earth. I'm going to allow this thing back in my life. I have worked so hard to get it out. I feel amazing with that, with that gone. There's no way that's coming back in. And that's kind of how that felt this week. Um, I'm hearing of a lot of people moving, moving houses, moving states, moving countries. Um, so just a lot shifting in general, people who have been in this town for ever, and all of a sudden they're moving people who just moved here a year or two ago and they're moving. Um, so it, it really feels like a timeline shifting or adjusting. Right. And we know scientifically that all time is now it's like pancakes. And basically it's just your shift in perspective and your consciousness that moves you from one to the other. So really, really big shifts and moves happening. And again, in that there's that buzzy feeling again, right? It's, it's kind of like the, the finger in the light socket feeling that I usually get in eclipse season, which is interesting because we are not in eclipse season right now. We're not even in all planets direct. Um, so it's interesting, um, likely some of the solar energy is helping move things along more quickly than normal. Um, the new is coming in. For those of you who haven't reached the, okay, we're moving decision or things are shifting in my life or the outward manifestation of the shifts and changes that have been happening to you. I would encourage you. I personally am one of those people. It hasn't fully shifted yet, but I, I can feel it. I can sense it. I can taste it. I can smell it. There's, there's flashes of almost as a future memories of what's going to happen that just drop in in any moment. So it's, it's, it's as if it's, it's here, it's just around us and there's a feeling into it or a sensing it. Um, it is important to notice if you are desiring this change, if you're wanting it, if there's an efforting in it, if there's a resistance to what is, you really want to notice that you may potentially, you could possibly have an anxious attachment to what is coming, right? So if you have that feeling of like, I need it to happen, I'm going to try to force it to happen. I'm going to try to help it along. I'm going to try to make things happen. That's an anxious attachment. And we all know what happens when we have an anxious partner who is, you know, too clingy and holding on to you, you want to run away right? So that, that cuts us off from um, the shift and the change. So really be careful not to be anxiously attached to whatever's coming in. It also can cause anxiety um, to, to, to feel into the uncertainty. I don't know exactly what's coming. I don't know exactly how this is going to play out. I don't know exactly how I'm going to get there. And so this is where we, we have the choice of where do we put our perspective? Where do we, where do we focus? right? What do we choose to focus on? Do I choose to focus on the uncertainty or do I choose to focus on trust, right? Because uncertainty is going to lead to anxiety, but trust is going to lead to peace. And even more fun is uh, excitement, right? Curiosity will lead to joy and fun. So we really get to d decide and choose what do we want to focus on? How do we want to perceive what we're moving into? Really sink into the body this is this is definitely the most beautiful timeless message that I've received. Um, and I'm really loving doing it. And it is a practice, but dropping into the body, not just temporarily, not just for a minute or two, but realizing we have the capacity to have multiple trains of thought. Notice how you've been in the middle of a discussion with someone, you're talking to a person and you're also thinking about what am I going to have for lunch, right? I'm hungry. I'm talking, I'm engaged. I'm really present with you, but I can also think, oh yeah, I'm going to have, you know, my, the salad I packed for lunch. We have the capacity for multiple trains of thought at once for a reason, right? We are perfectly designed exactly as we need to be the way our creator intended us. And so I, I asked the question, what is, what is that for? What are we supposed to do with that? And there is this ability to hold our attention in our body, to understand what's happening in our body and to be one with the spark of God that lives within you, 
If you think about your autonomic nervous system, it is automatically run by something. No one knows, right? What is the energy that causes your heart to beat? What is the energy that digests your food? What is the energy that pumps your blood or that beats your heart or causes you to breathe? I think I said one of those twice, um, but really look at that's, that is God. God is the energy in everything that animates our being. And so there is, whether you feel comfortable saying God is in me, which I personally have an understanding of and a feeling, a felt sense of. Um, but I also know that can be difficult for some. You can think of it as the spark of light that is in you. You can think of it as the breath of life that courses through you. It is the energy that animates your body. So really connect with and drop into your body and feel the God spark in your body. God, right? It tells us the body is the temple for the spirit. God lives in your body. And it's interesting because it will shift and change for me. Sometimes it's in the heart, but sometimes it's in the high solar plex, but really keeping your, your, uh, focus and attention, at least that second train of thought on the God source or the God spark in your body that allows you to have a felt sense or an embodiment of your source is right. Source, the creator of the universe is your source and allows us to release that anxious attachment. It allows us to drop in and know that money is not my source. People are not my source. Nothing outside of me is necessary for me to be okay. In fact, the meaning of the, the phrase, everything you need is within you is referring to our consciousness on God eternal within the body, which is written on the codes of our DNA. Not only letting your creator be your source, knowing it, embodying it, feeling the certainty of that. It requires us to come within, but the beauty of that is it releases us of the need to seek everything without. We get to let go of control. We get to surrender. We get to tune into the the higher mind, the divine mind, we get to stay tuned to the God spark within us and, and make it such a practice that you notice I'm, I'm connected more often than I'm not. No, so you'll start to notice, oh, I popped out, right? I, I, I went into my ego mind instead of my divine mind. And in through the, and then my hand is also on my solar plexus, but through the awareness of in the body and staying connected to God eternal within the body, you then tap into the higher mind and that, you know, the, the source of creation, the source of abundance, the guidance that we seek that leads us to our sustenance and our provision, right? So really start to practice always being connected, ABC, always be connected. I, um, Christine Michelle, I think might've been the one to say something like that. I want to give credit, but I don't remember her name exactly. Um, but let your mind become one with the higher mind and start to notice when you go into the ego mind, you're disconnected. When you come back to the body and God within the body, then you're connecting to the divine mind and try to maintain that. Notice when you pop out and make that just a practice, like we're going to the gym, we're exercising our muscles so that we can stay connected to the higher mind, right? Let it move you. When you're in the ego mind, the ego is moving you through life. When you are in the divine mind, the divine is moving you through life. Notice those old habits that were wanting to come up and consciously choose to do the opposite. Basically, if you had a flight tendency and you're always rushing, then slow down. If you feel stuck, then as you connect to the divine mind, you're going to feel that desire to move. You're going to have the motivation or the energy to do that. Start to notice that anxious attachment. If you're anxiously attached to something, the key is to let it go, right? I used to need money to be okay. No, no, I'm good. I don't need money to be okay because I have God eternal within the body right now. And then because you've let go, you're no longer anxiously attached. It flows so beautifully and easily, right? Avoidance of it is the opposite of the anxious. Then we want to move towards it, right? So in connection with God in the body, all comes from love. We know through the course of miracles that a, a miracle is a shift in perspective towards love. What is the opposite of that? If our perspective is not towards love, that means it's towards fear. That's that anxious 
of attachment. That's the avoidance. That's the, the disbelief in your creator's capacity to be your provider. And so we really want to look at, are we moving through a perspective of love? Or are we moving through a perspective of fear? And really start to notice that. And when you find yourself in fear, you find yourself choosing from a place of ego and, and a feeling of I'm on my own and it's all up to me and it's always been hard. That ego perspective, that ego mind is a perspective towards fear. And we want to shift it back towards love by being one with the creator, God eternal within the body. I love you, my beautiful friends. Let me know if there's any questions on this, if I need to expand on it further. It is a felt sense of something, so it's difficult to articulate, but I would love to hear from you. It's sending you lots of love and I will see you on the next one. Namaste.